what is up you two welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then just welcome to my channel girl go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed my ogs y'all ain't heard the intro in a minute but i feel like doing it today and i know i'm calling y'all on a wednesday instead of a tuesday but i sent y'all a little text if you did not get it it said that uh mother sat down to go and edit her video and my apple desktop was acting janky she crashed and when it restarted, it backed up to like two days before. Everything except one little part of my notes, which was like one tenth of the notes. And I was pissed. So I had to literally start over. But this is the thing though. Everything definitely happens for a reason. And not that I rushed the research, but I felt like I was missing something. Because when I watched the trial, I didn't watch the entire trial. I watched most of it. I still felt like I was missing something possibly but when everything got deleted and i told you i was just gonna push the video back a day i was just like well i have time now not a lot of time but i got some time to go back and watch the rest of the trial and i did and i'm glad i did because there were some things that were inconsistent with some of the reports in 2011 21 year old clintina stewart she is a junior at ntsu clintina also known as tina by her friends and family and just pretty much everybody that knew her She's there on an athletic scholarship. Tina is one of their star athletes. She had always been into sports. She loved basketball and everything about it. She liked the camaraderie of being on a team, just the whole team dynamic, all of the things, right? Tina also had one of those personalities that was very likable, very outgoing, really helped boost the overall morale of the team. And she loved basketball so much that in her free time, she would volunteer at one of the local high schools as a basketball coach. She is very well known and very well liked, not only amongst the other athletes, but just around campus in general. Like a lot of people knew her and many people loved her. Going into her junior year, she had made arrangements to live in student housing, like these apartments off campus. In an effort to not have a complete stranger as a roommate, she was actually planning on having one of her teammates as a roommate, but that unfortunately does not pan out. So then it is left up to the student housing department to choose a roommate and they really tried to pair people up as roommates who had like a lot of similarities people that they felt like judging by i guess their background personality types pair people up like that that they felt like were a good match and could live together you know comfortably so they choose a roommate for her and she's she's pretty much fine with it tina had one of those type of personalities where she pretty much got along with everybody so she wasn't too concerned about not getting along with her roommate she makes it to the apartment first she chooses her room and she begins to just you know unpack and settle in 18 year old Shanterica Madden she is also arriving the same fall semester to NTSU and she is a freshman she's a criminal justice major and she's just really excited about going away to college if you've ever gone away from college baby you know what that feels like like it's super exciting to you know be off on your own and be in a new place and just all of the things that come along with that now unlike tina who is very outgoing she's very lively she has a very people-friendly personality shanterica is very quiet she's very reserved and she's described as being somewhat of a, a geek or a nerd if you will if that's not a derogatory term child i was a nerd too so don't take offense she's one of those type of people who really come off as standoffish until they get a chance to know you and they warm up to you and then you get to see their personality once she lets her guard down and she gets to know you and she's comfortable she's super friendly very loving and very sweet shaterica is also very very close with her mother they have an extremely close relationship this is the first time she's really going to be away from her mom she'd hoped that her roommate was somebody that she could relate to someone who was somewhat like her or at the very least somebody that she could enjoy living with but it'd be an added bonus if the two really clicked formed a connection possibly a friendship and you know could hang out up until this point the only thing that she had been told about her roommate was that they had been paired together because they had a similar background and they both had come from the same hometown which is memphis tennessee so shanterica is really looking forward to getting there and just finding out who the person is she enters the apartment and there she is the roommate clintina stewart tina immediately introduces herself and she lets shanterica know because she had already arrived she had already chosen a room and she hoped that you know she didn't have an issue with the room that she is now left with 
She then walked Shanterica over to her room, which is significantly smaller than the other room. But Shanterica really didn't mind at all because, like I said, this is the first time she's out on her own. It's the first apartment. She's just excited to have her own space. So she's really not bothered by this at all. She puts down the things that she had carried in and she immediately just goes to finish unpacking the rest of her belongings. The first night in the apartment together, the two ladies are pretty much just doing their own thing. Tina is in her room listening to music. She has a nice little calm vibe going. She is decorating, hanging her things up on the wall. Shanterica is also in her own room, but she's kind of just skimming through her textbooks and also settling in the last of her things. Tina then decides to initiate conversation to sort of break the ice. She notices that Shanterica is a little shy and she's the exact opposite. She doesn't mind getting the ball rolling between the two so that there is not this just awkward silence or just awkward energy between the two of them at all. They have to live together. Tina decides to create a space for the two of them to just get the opportunity to know each other. Their personalities are obviously very different, but they do share some similarities as far as their background. Both ladies are from Memphis, Tennessee. Both of them are the first of their families to go to college, and both of them are really excited to be there, just excited about the school year. And although it's not super apparent that the two of them would probably be friends or, you know, hanging out together or into the same things, the vibe between them is very positive, and so they're off to a good start. And both ladies are relieved to find that the person that they'd be sharing their living space with turned out to be a pretty cool person. But two weeks into them living together, the ladies begin to learn of ways that they're also very, very different. Tina will come home and find that things that belong to her have been utilized, presumably, of course, by her roommate because who else is there? No one. And this sort of bothered her. She didn't mind so much sharing, but she felt like it was just common courtesy and respect for the person to ask to utilize her belongings before just using them. And so she addresses this with Shanterica and lets her know, this is not okay. Ask me first, don't just use my stuff. Shanterica has no choice but to just apologize and abide by this request because these things belong to Tina. But she did feel like it was kind of petty. She felt like anything that she had in the apartment that was within the shared space, she would not mind if Tina used them whether she asked or not. So she didn't understand why Tina was making this a big deal. Another something that really bothered Tina about Shanterica was the fact that Shanterica wasn't as clean as she would like her to be. Tina really liked a clean space. She did not like things left out where they did not belong. She did not like dishes left in the sink. None of the things like she liked to keep a nice, clean, tidy house at all times. She didn't understand that if she could pick up after herself and clean as she goes along, it shouldn't be an issue for anybody else to do the same. Why is it that Shanterica cannot do the same thing? Shanterica, on the flip side, she would oftentimes leave a dish or two in the sink or little things out of place in the common living area with the intention of picking up after class. If she was in a rush to get to campus and had her little glass of juice or something in the morning, she would just leave it in the sink jar and hit the road and say she'd just deal with it later. And this really, really annoyed Tina because she felt like you should have respect for me as your roommate not to leave the common area unclean. She decides to address Shanterica about this as well and let her know like this is not okay. If we're gonna share the same living space, and coexist peacefully and comfortably, then I need you to not do this either, okay? Capiche? And then when Tina returns home from school and finds that some of her, her food is missing, okay, without her permission, and she's already had the conversation with Shanterica about not touching her things, she is really pissed. Tina then decides to take a stack of little sticky notes, write her name on them, Shanterica's name on some, and literally label everything inside the refrigerator. She then separates their food where hers is on one side, Shanterica's is on the other side, so it couldn't be no kind of confusion. And to really kind of send a clear, clearer message out there that although we share a living space, that's it. Like, that's all we sharing up in here. We're not sharing food or any of the things. Only touch what's yours. And child, if you need any help remembering what's yours, here are the sticky notes to let you know. Shanterica returns to the apartment and she sees this and this kind of rubs her the wrong way. She feels like 
again, Tina is being petty and that this was unnecessary to do, but what is she to do? Now, Shantarika's actions were not the only ones whose actions resulted in a little tension between the two of them. Like I said earlier, she was very, very quiet, very reserved, and somewhat of a geek, if you will. She would spend a lot of her excess or downtime in her apartment inside her room studying. Now, Tina, however, like a lot of college students, enjoyed spending her free time hanging out with friends and really just having fun. She had a pretty good social standing and she would oftentimes hold these very intimate like little get togethers at the apartment. Not a bunch of people, not a party, just her and a couple of her classmates and teammates in the living room, just listening to music, joking, enjoying each other's company, having a good time. Now, unfortunately, these little little gatherings would oftentimes happen while Shantarika was in her room trying to study. And so she was really, really bothered about it. She felt like this was very, very inconsiderate of Tina. And so she decides to voice her concerns and ask them to keep it down. With them being older than her and a lot more boisterous, it was kind of intimidating for her to go out there and just be like, can y'all, you know, keep it down. Furthermore, the walls in the apartment are super, super thin. So oftentimes when she would have to ask them to keep it down, she would hear them make rude and insulting comments about her. So this only furthers her discomfort with Tina having her friends over. They never made any of these comments directly to her, but they would say things about her like she's weird or is something wrong with her loud enough to where she could hear it over the next couple weeks the tension between the two young ladies it continues to rise shantarika's friends are even noticing a change in her demeanor when it's time for her to head home or just how she sounds when they are talking to her and she is at home she's a lot less jovial she's more quiet her tone is more more somber her energy overall is just down and so they notice that she's very much unhappy on one occasion Shantarika and two of her friends they grab some food and decide that they're gonna eat at the apartment they go into the kitchen dining area and immediately notice that there are these sticky notes around on everything. Everything is labeled either Tina or Shantarica. There are also two sets of everything. There's two of things that you typically wouldn't even need to of. For example, two toasters. And these things are also labeled. The friends are like, what's going on here? Like, this is ridiculous that you guys can't even share anything. Like, why y'all got two toasters, sis? Like, what's, what's the deal? Even the dishes and the silverware were labeled. Like, literally, spoons, forks, and knives had a tiny TS sticker that was Tina's initials, obviously, Tina Stewart. There's also this sticky note reminder, if you will, that says, don't forget to wash your dishes. Shantarika's friends are like, girl, this is ridiculous. Like, why, why do y'all live like this? To them, she brushes it off like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like, we're cool. Things are all right. But in all actuality, it did bother her. Like, she felt like it was very petty and a bit extreme for literally every, every spoon, fork, and knife to be labeled and them not being able to share anything. They sit down to eat. And before they finish, Tina returns home. She walks into the living space on her way to the kitchen. And she sees the group there. Shantarika immediately speaks to her and she introduces her friends or she tries to introduce her friends. Tina looks up from her phone and she tells her, don't forget to wash those, pertaining to the dishes that they were using. And then she simply just goes about her way. She doesn't address the friends, child. She don't wave back. Ain't no, hey, how you doing? None of the things. The friends thought that that was that was pretty rude and not only was it rude they noticed that her tone of voice was very stern like she was the authoritative authoritative figure here and so they didn't they didn't too much like that one of the friends finishes he goes to wash his hands at the kitchen sink and when Shantarika notices that he used the hand soap or the dish soap that had TS, she spazzes out. She is like, you didn't use this one, did you? This one is the one that you were supposed to use. That one is, you know, it's not mine. It's Tina's. And the friend is like, girl, calm down. It's not that big of a deal. But Shantarika is like, actually, you wouldn't think that it was that big of a deal, but it is. And it's just really easier to coexist abiding by this ground rule that if it's not yours you didn't buy it 
don't touch it. She then shows him which hand towel he needed to use to dry his hands, the one that belonged to her and not Tina. And she was just so shaken in her little spirit, child, about him using the hand soap that it kind of just ruined the whole mood. The friend's mood was ruined too because they felt like she was just being extra. Like this whole thing was just, it was just weird. One morning, Shantarika goes to the kitchen to grab her some breakfast. And as she turns around, she notices a tall male figure standing behind her. And he's just like, hey. She is like, sir, what are you doing here? It actually really startles her because it's a strange man in your house. Like, sir, who are you? And what are you doing here? What do you want? When Tina hears the commotion, she immediately comes to the kitchen and she is just like, there's, you know, no calls for worry. This is my boyfriend, KC. KC had actually spent the night and I guess he was going to the kitchen to get him some juice too. Shantarika is pissed about this because she felt like it was just common courtesy for Tina to let her know if somebody would be spending the night inside of their apartment, especially a grown man who to her is just a strange man. You might be familiar with him, but to me, he's still a stranger. Like, let me know. This is not okay. Tina, however, does not feel like she owes that to her. She feels like this is my apartment just as well as it is yours. And so I don't have to run these things by you. And I can pretty much have company whenever I want to. From there, KC begins to spend a lot more time at the apartment, including spending the night. And Shantarika is extremely uncomfortable with his presence because in her mind to her, he is still just the strange man that is hanging out at the apartment all the time. The living arrangements by this time, they have become very tense and uncomfortable for both of these young ladies. And for Tina, having KC there provided a level of security and comfort that made the living situation a little more bearable for her. So she was not trying to have him there any less and be there just with Shantarika in a very tense environment. Another month goes by with Casey spending more and more time at the apartment despite how uncomfortable Shantarika has said that his presence makes her. And to further add to the tension that had already been building consistently, he had begun like he wasn't dirtying up the apartment or extremely messy but he was breaking some of the rules that Tina has set for Shantarika and Tina seemingly was not addressing them with him. This really really pissed Shantarika off. She felt like if it's me doing it it's an issue but when your boyfriend leave his socks and shoes in the living room it's not and that's not fair. It's annoying. But Tina was not trying to hear Shantarika's complaints. She had a lot going on. Being a star athlete, keeping up with her grades, her volunteering as a coach at a local high school, she had a lot on her plate. As the school year progresses, the stress of it all, it begins to take a toll on her. And she does what many of us have done in the past and still do to this day. We utilize social media to express our thoughts and sometimes our frustrations. And so this is what she she began to do but unfortunately in addition to tweeting about how stressful college life was for her she also expressed her grievances with her roommate tina would tweet things like i can't stand living with this girl she's so dirty she thinks that she has her mother here to pick up after her and she doesn't she'd also make disparaging comments about Shantarika's appearance and the way that she dressed. Mind you, Tina is pretty popular. So she has a nice little social status and a significant following, many of whom are also students at NTSU. And so this would really influence the ways that people who knew and favored Tina would treat or interact with Shantarika when they ran across her. It was also pretty embarrassing for Shantarika. At this point, she felt like Tina was bullying her. She also did not like that campus life had somewhat become an escape from the toxicity of their household. And now this was spilling over into her campus life and the internet. And it was just, it was just becoming a bit too much. At this point, the two of them just decide that the best thing for them to do is just avoid the other as much as possible. And neither of them can wait for this year to be over and for them to get different housing arrangements. On the rare occasion that they would have the entire place to themselves, they would really revel in their solitude, child, and enjoy it 
It was the only time that they felt at complete peace while within the apartment. Now, in one instance, Shanterica is the one who is home alone and she is enjoying it fully. She decides she's going to take her a nice long shower and use up all the hot water and all of the things. She's in the bathroom taking a shower and then she hears this noise that is obviously coming from within the apartment. But she knows that Tina is not there. So she's like, what's going on here? She listens and then she hears more noise and she's just like, what, what's going on? Who is here? She gets out of the shower, wraps a towel around herself and decides she's going to go investigate. Now, as soon as she opens the bathroom door to go into the hallway, she sees a tall, dark figure who is obviously not Tina and immediately freaks out. It actually turns out to be KC. And although it's not some strange man who had broken in and was there to harm her, she is still very much irritated and very much upset at the fact that he was there without Tina. She's like, you should not be here. She's like, I don't even like when you're here with her. You damn sure shouldn't be here without her. This is not okay. He does apologize for scaring her though. And you know, just lets her know he was there just to wait for Tina who was on her way home. He wasn't being a creep or anything like that in any capacity. He just was headed to Tina's room to sit and wait for her. Jenterica, she does not care for his apology at all. She decides to call her mother and vent about the situation because she just, at this point, is tired of addressing this issue with Tina is not changing and now he is here scaring the hell out of her while Tina is not even there. She doesn't know what else to do. She's just fed up. Her mother tells her, you know what? It is something that you can do actually. He is not supposed to be there like that all of the time. And so I'm going to reach out to the apartment manager in student housing to let them know that this is going on. And hopefully they can put a stop to it. Shantarika's mother reaches out to the apartment manager who then reach out to Shantarika to get her statement and Shantarika lets them know all of the things that have been going on that makes this living arrangement so uncomfortable. She's at the point where, you know what, it's becoming too much. Like it's taking a toll on me. I can't take too much more of it. The apartment manager is like, okay, calm down. I'll reach out to Tina. I'll set up a meeting between all of us. I'll mediate it and hopefully we can come to a resolve and you guys can clear up any issues that you have. But child, this call only worsens the situation between the two. When the apartment manager contacts Tina and she finds out that they had called the apartment manager on her, she is pissed because she has her own grievances with Shanterica. And she didn't like the fact that they called on her like she is just this huge problem and she's the reason why they cannot peacefully coexist. Tina goes to confront Shanterica and she's just like, why would you call the apartment manager? Like, are you trying to, you trying to snitch on me? Like, if you have an issue with me, we should be able to settle it. You should be able to come to me, not call your mommy crying, not going to the apartment manager to tell on me. Come address me. Don't go, don't go everywhere else, sis. Now, Tina had agreed to attend the mediation, but when the date came up, she said that something basketball related also came up, which prevented her from making the meeting. The meeting is never rescheduled, and so it never happens. The apartment manager does call Shanterica back to follow up, and when they do, this is after the winter break, Shanterica tells them that everything is fine. They had a chance to talk and resolve their issues and work them out between the two of them which was not true. It was not the case. They had not worked out anything, Ja. Nothing was resolved. They just had time to get away for a little bit, go home, be with family, and clear their head spaces. Shanterica had just told them that so they could pretty much just leave it alone because it obviously was a sore spot for Tina. The second semester begins and neither of the two young ladies feel like they even have it in them to continue through another semester living with the other. But unfortunately, they were unable to change their living arrangements. And so they really had no choice but to try to rough it over these next couple of months. Shanterica, she had actually contemplated dropping out altogether and not returning. But she decided against it. Because of all the stress, she just decided, you know what, I was just less in my classes this semester. She decided that with a little less academic stress, she could probably just endure the rest of the school 
school year, just a couple more months and this would all be over. They each go into the semester with the same strategy. Avoid the other one at all costs as much as possible. When you're at home, just stay in your room unless you need to go to the kitchen to get something to eat or drink. As a means of coping with her stress, Shantarica had begun to um, partake in the devil's lettuce, if you know what I mean. She would close her door, crack her window, and child get lit like Times Square on the night of New Year's Eve. Now their rooms were right across from each other, not exactly, but like at an angle where if you're inside Shantarica's room, you can see a little bit into Tina's room if both of their doors are open. So one night, while Shantarica is on her way to cloud nine, Tina starts to smell it and she is like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I do something. The school randomly drug tests the athletes and failing a drug test can mean you get kicked off the team. She could not afford to test positive by inhaling any kind of secondhand smoke and it just was not worth risking it. The entire time that she was there, she had remained in good academic standing and on good terms with the coach and with the team and she was not about to allow anybody else's actions jeopardize her scholarship and everything that she had going on and all of the things that she had worked so hard to build. So she immediately goes to let Tina know, baby, you can do that, but you can't do that up in here. Like you gotta go. Not only is Shantarica high, baby, she is annoyed at this. She felt like Tina acted like she was her mother away from home. She was grown, she didn't need an authority figure. She felt like Tina had no right to tell her what she could and could not do and that, you know, it was too, just too many rules. Tina was just too uptight. Nothing that she did was okay to do. So she does not back down. The two exchange a couple of words, but ultimately Shantarica decides to just leave, leave the house. She goes to a friend's house and she is talking, you know, letting them know what happened and just how, how bad it is. How fed up she is. The friend suggested she not go back to the apartment. Just, you know, spend some time away. Clear your head and get out of that toxic space for a while. At first, she's like, no, like, that's my apartment. I should not have to go somewhere else for peace. I should have peace where I pay bills. But ultimately, she does decide, you know what, maybe I should go somewhere else. Like, yeah, I will spend the night away. At least long enough to, you know, cool off before I return. Tina turns to KC for support and just a vent because she knows that him being an athlete himself and him being familiar with her coach and how hard he is, John, how much he don't play, he will understand of all people why this was an issue, that she just wasn't being petty. She wasn't just being, you know, unreasonable and extra. Like she was very much justified in her reaction. What was originally supposed to be one night away from the apartment, it progresses into a couple of nights away from the apartment because after that first one, Shantarika is feeling better. She's feeling like her energy, her vibrations are back up and she's just in a better headspace. So she's only returning to the apartment to drop off her dirty clothes in her room and get some new ones. She didn't even like being there for the little time that it took her to, you know, make that little transaction because Casey would be there. She just felt like she was overwhelmed and outnumbered being there at the apartment. And it's just, it was just toxic. The stress was taking a toll on Tina as well. Even without Shantarica being there, the energy of the apartment was just bad. She did not like being there. She could not wait to move out. She was looking at her options for her next apartment. Her and KC were talking about getting an apartment together. She just could not wait for this to be over. And even though Shantarica was spending the night somewhere else, she knew that this wasn't permanent and that the girl would be coming back eventually. Five days passed since the altercation that resulted in Shantarica spending a couple of days away with her friends. And Shantarica is out with her friend Renee. Renee's music class has a concert and Shantarika had planned on attending the concert with Renee but these concerts apparently were super boring. They weren't like, you know, the fun ones. They were boring music class concerts, if you will. So the two decide they're going to skip it. They go on campus, they buy themselves a little gram and they're looking for a place to, you know, 
light it up, get it popping. Typically on this day of the week at this particular time, Tina was away. She usually was not at the apartment. And so Shantarica's like, you know what? We might be able to go back to my place and do this because Tina should not be there. She usually isn't. So let's go there and see. They enter the apartment. It's pitch black and it's quiet. Shantarica does a walkthrough, gives Renee the green light. We're good to go. Let's go in my room and light it up. The two open the window in Shantarica's room, but her door is not closed during the whole ordeal because she has to wash clothes. So she's back and forth in and out of the room, which spreads the smell of the devil's lettuce all down the hallways. She's thinking it's all right because she got time to clear and air the place out before Tina returns. They're also very comfortable enjoying the fact that they're the only two there. They're talking about Tina and the whole situation and how she can't wait for it to be over. Tina is just so extra and just all of her grievances with her roommate, which of course she feels completely comfortable doing because she got the place to herself. They're all alone. She tells Renee about how excited she is to just either live on her own or find another roommate that she gets along with because the place is just so much happier and she's just so much more at peace when she is at home alone like they are now. The only problem is they were not actually home alone. Tina is, in fact, inside of the apartment. She's just inside of her room with the door closed and the light was off. She was there waiting on KC to come pick her up and the two had plans to go get something to eat. Not only can she hear the two of them talking about her, she can also smell the marijuana. And so she is pissed. But she decides that the last time she tried to address Shantarica about this, it did not go so well. So she would take a different approach this time to rectify the situation. Tina calls the police. She then goes to Twitter and she tweets, I just got the police on my roommate. I feel like a snitch, but I don't like this video. Moments later, Shantarica and Renee, they hear a loud knocking on the door, honey, and they hear police or whatever you know the police say when they come to you though. So of course they are spooked child. They immediately hide the rest of their little stash. They don't even know at this point that Tina is inside the apartment still. They soon realize though when they hear her open the door and tell the police about them and what they were doing and where he can go and search and find them and arrest them and haul them off to jail. The officer comes to their room and lets them know that he had been called and you know they had been reported basically. Tina is still very much hype and amped up and the officer tells her, you know, just go to your room. Let me handle it. I got it from here. He then tells Chanterica and Renee that they needed to be more careful. Things like this could cause them to get arrested, child. They could be kicked out of school. It can prevent Chanterica from becoming a lawyer in the future. Like, they just have to be very careful. They do admit to him that they were doing it, but they were not anymore in the little bit that they had left. He tells Shantarica that she needs to go flush down the toilet right in front of him, which she, she does. Sis wasn't trying to go to jail, so she just decided, you know what? All right, I'll flush it. Before the officer leaves, though, he tells Shantarica that it's obviously bad blood between her and her roommate, and whatever it is, they needed to fix it because this isn't really normal. So he's like, you know what? Y'all need to work that out. And she tells him that she will make an attempt and he goes on about his way. Shantarica is pissed that Tina will call the police on them while they were doing this. And so she goes down the hall, honey, higher than giraffe ass and angry. Renee had gone back to Shantarica's room. The door was open. Tina had gone back to her own room, but her door was closed. And so Shantarica is knocking on the door. She had called her best friend to tell her about the whole incident and let her know, like, child of police in there searching right now, girl. And then she hears a knock at her door. She's unsure if it's the police or who it is. It's not a peephole on the bedroom door. So she opens it and finds that it's actually Shantarica. And she's like, what do you want? Shantarica asks her, why didn't you tell me? Like, as in, why didn't you tell me first that you were here or tell me to put it out before you call the police? Tina is like, well, why didn't you tell me before you called the apartment manager about KC being here all the time? Shantarica's like, I don't have to tell you anything. And so Tina's like, well, I don't have to tell you anything. At this point, the two ladies begin exchanging words back and forth. And Renee hears Tina threaten to pretty much whoop Shantarica's ass and tell her she'll, you know, whoop her friend too. Like, where's your friend? Is she scared? Where's she go? 
she can get it too. But Renee, she didn't want no parts of it. She said that she just went on close the door, child. And she started texting her friend like, look, come pick me up because they doing too much. Then Renee hears one of the ladies say, don't push me. She is unsure whose voice it is. All of a sudden, she hears a lot of a lot of shuffling and furniture moving, and it's very apparent that the two girls are in an all-out fight at this point. She also hears one of the two ladies say, she has a knife, call the police. But again, she says she is unsure of which voice it is. And she does not call the police. She just, she just calls her ride again, like, girl, where you at? The next thing that she recalls hearing loud and clear is Shantarica's voice saying, my head, my head. And Shantarica repeatedly asking her to stop and to hold on. And she hears Tina saying, hold on for what? All of a sudden it goes, quiet and she doesn't hear anything she doesn't hear any movements she doesn't hear either of the girls voices anymore she hears nothing a few moments later Shantarica's bedroom door swings open and it's Shantarica she is bleeding a little bit and she obviously was not the one who had the upper hand in the fight although Tina played basketball she was not some Amazon of a woman she was only five foot seven and that's not tall debate me in the comments if you want to sis you might be a bit above average but you ain't told okay stop it somebody needed to hear that now granted she is not all that tall Shantarica is only four foot eleven so she's pretty tall to her so there is a significant height difference between the two and with Tina being an athlete it's not really that hard to believe that you know she would physically take on Shantarica with no issue Renee asks Shantarica if she is okay and Shantarica is like, she cut me, but yes, I'm fine. And then she tells her, we need to go. Renee is like, why? What happened? And she's like, nothing happened, but we need to go. Like, we need to leave. Renee then asks Shantarica, where is Tina? Like, where did she go? And she tells her, Tina left, and we need to be leaving too. At this time, Renee is like at the doorway of Shantarica's room, and so she goes back to get her purse. As she is coming out into the hallway to go toward the front door, she sees Shantarica coming out of Tina's room with a balled up blanket in her hands, which she then takes to the kitchen to get a plastic bag, and she is stuffing this blanket inside of the plastic bag, but then a partial blade of a knife falls out onto the floor and the two of the girls are just looking at each other renee's like girl oh no see mm -mm, i'm out of here now like i'm out and i'm not leaving with your ass like i'm leaving by myself shantarica attempts to hand the bag to renee and renee is like no i'm not putting my hands on that i'm getting out of here her ride had not arrived yet but they were on the way and so she decided she would just wait for them out on the curb if she had to as she is going past their bedrooms to leave to go to the front door, she does not look all the way inside Tina's room, but just passing the doorway, she can see the bottom part of Tina's leg, and it's clear that Tina is laid out on the floor, and obviously more than likely hurt. But she is unsure of how hurt Tina is. And at this point, she's very uncomfortable being there in the apartment with Shantarica, even though it's her friend, it's like, girl, I don't know what you're capable of and what you might do. So I'm about to go. She leaves the apartment and there was this funeral home near, like right down the street. So she goes there, takes her ride and tells her she'll wait for them there. She's just thinking about how she saw Tina's leg after Shantarica told her that Tina had left. And so she's just like, something might be really, really wrong here. While she's waiting on her ride, she calls the police anonymously and tells them that there's a fight and that they needed to get there ASAP because she didn't know how bad it was. Meanwhile, Shantarica is blowing her phone up and she does not want to answer at first, but she eventually decides to answer the phone because she saw Shantarica come out of the apartment with the bag. So she answers for Shantarica and she's just like, yeah, I'm down here at the funeral home waiting on my ride. Shantarica's like, I'm on my way. And Renee is like, damn. You don't have to be really honestly or truly. I prefer you not, but you might be a killer child. So let me just tread lightly. By the time Shantarica walks up, she no longer has the plastic bag with her. And Renee immediately notices that she has Tina's phone, this blue phone, like tucked in her bra. When Shantarica notices, she quickly tucks it down in her bra even more. And Renee is really... Child, she really scared at this point. Shantarica starts asking her where she's going, who's picking her up. She does not tell Shantarica. She's just like, you know, I don't know yet, but so-and-so 
is who is on the way. She's asking Renee if she told anybody. She was like, please don't tell anybody about anything that you saw here tonight. Don't mention it, please. Finally, Renee's friends arrive. And it's a girl that is familiar with Shanterica. Actually, it's two girls that come and pick her up. And they're familiar with Shanterica, but judging by what Renee had told them it happened up until that point, they were like, oh no, she can't get in the car. Like, she cannot ride with us. And so they leave Shanterica standing there on the curb in front of the funeral home with Tina's phone in her bra. Right before the altercation and during the altercation, Tina, like I said, was on the phone with her best friend, but at some point during the fight, the phone had gotten hung up and she had tried to call back several times out of concern, of course, she's on the phone with her best friend. They started to fight, y'all, and then all of a sudden the phone goes dead. So, of course, you know, she's concerned that she's now not answering the phone, but she is relieved once she receives a text from Tina stating, you know, oh, everything is fine. I'm about to hop in the shower now. And pretty much I'll talk to you later. KC had also begun calling Tina's phone and his calls were being sent straight to voicemail which he of course finds odd because they have plans tonight so why are you now ignoring my call like what's going on? When he receives a text response instead of a call back or an answer to his calls he doesn't get the same relief that the friend got he actually becomes worried that something is wrong, especially when he responds that he's just going to go ahead and go home and then he does not receive a text response after that. He gets the feeling that something is going on, something is wrong, and so he decides to go over to the apartment just to make sure that everything is okay. When he arrives, he immediately notices that her car is there parked and not only that, the lights are off in her room up there and so he's like, it's just 7 o'clock. This is this is weird. Like, I know she hasn't gone to bed. We had plans. He got this really strong vibe that something was wrong. He goes up to the apartment and he finds that luckily the door is unlocked. He's able to walk right in. And as soon as he enters the apartment, who does he see? Shanterica. She is standing in the hall right near the door. And the first thing out of her mouth is, Tina's not here. And so he's like, he brushes past her, goes to Tina's room. Shanterica is hot on his trail. Meanwhile, like she is right there on his heels following him. She's not saying anything at this point. He enters Tina's room and he is horrified to find her there laying face down on her floor. He immediately kneels down beside her, turns her over. She is still breathing and so he immediately dials 911. He is yelling at Shanterica like, what did you do? Why would you do this? Shanterica takes off. While he is waiting on the ambulance to arrive, he is trying to keep her conscience, trying to talk to her. He also calls her dad to let him know that he needs to get there as soon as possible. And he just pretty much waits for the paramedics to arrive. They get there, they rush Tina to the hospital, and unfortunately, she does not make it. It does not take police long to locate Shanterica because she's still there in the parking lot hiding out with no plan. Renee had left her and her friends had pretty much told her, nah, you can't, you can't come over here. You can't bring that over here. You can't ride with us. I'm so sorry about it. Before going over to where Renee was, she had actually taken the bag and dumped it in a dumpster. She had also called her mother and told her that her and Tina had gotten into a fight, but she does not mention how bad it actually was and that either of them had been cut. They arrest Shanterica. She pleads not guilty, citing that she had done what she had done in pure self-defense. Now, according to her, after the police officer left and told her that, you know, they needed to fix it, initially, she was just gonna get her things and go. She was like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave. I shouldn't have come back here tonight anyway. Like, Renee, let's go. But then on second thought, she felt like, no, I should at least have a conversation and apologize to her and let her know like, my bad, I didn't know you were here. She goes to knock on Tina's door. Tina opens the door and is pretty much not trying to hear her out at all. She's telling her, you know what, you should just leave. Like they have, they do exchange the words of why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? And then Tina is just like, girl, get out, like just leave. But she said that when she turned to leave, Tina pushed her back like really hard and so she turned around because for lack of better words she wanted to get her lick back so she pushes Tina back after Tina is pushed she takes her little fist balls it up and then hits 
Shanterica right in the eye. At this point, a full-on fight ensues between the two. They are tussling back and forth. They're insulting each other. It's not long before Tina is completely getting the best of her. She said that she began to ask Tina or beg Tina to stop. She just wanted to be done at this point, like throw in the towel. But Tina would not stop hitting her. When Tina does not stop, she notices a knife that was already there in the room. She grabs it and just pushes it into the girl's chest. From what she remembers, that was pretty much the extent of the use of the knife, but Tina was also cut on the back of her shoulder and the back of her scalp. So something else had happened. And when Shantarika was asked about this at her trial, she said that she does not recall intentionally causing any more injuries and that those might have happened after she had, you know, grabbed the blade and they were still tussling back and forth. That's how she believed those happened. But nevertheless, she felt like she had to do that in order to just stop the fight and get Tina off of her. It is what she does after the fact that causes the jury to completely reject her self-defense claim. And she is found guilty. Not only has she ditched the weapon, she had taken Tina's phone and responded to people who were attempting to reach her via text in a way to make it seem like she was still okay. She claimed to have done this because she said she was afraid that one of them might pop up or stop by and she just did not want them to come there right away and find that she had done this to Tina. She didn't have a plan. She didn't know what to do at that point. You know, this was only the first little semester of her little criminal justice major, child. She just, she was still in the prerequisites. She had not had that time to learn that much about the do's and don'ts of criminal activity. And so she didn't know what the hell to do at this point. Shanterica Madden is sentenced to 25 years in prison and she is said to be released when she is 43 years old. Her birthday is June 10th. So while I know that's not a Scorpio, I don't know who it is. Let me see, June 10th. Somebody know right now. And it's their sign and they are shaken in their spirit. June 10th, I think that might be Gemini. Yep. Gemini, Gemini people, this is y'all's mess. Y'all, this case, this is the thing. I feel a lot of ways because, let me point this out for one, because I know it's going to be somebody who saw this story on Investigation Discovery. I know it's multiple shows. I only watch one. Now, I know they dramatify, if that's a word, it's going to be a word today. I know they dramatize a lot of situations, but with this one, I realized they just flat foot change some of the story so if you saw the show on there and you're like no some of this ain't in alignment with what i saw they change a lot of the events and a lot of the stuff that they change in this story i didn't even understand why like the whole situation after the fact between renee and shanterica how that went down they portrayed it completely different than what was said during the trial granted maybe 80 85 percent of what they showed on the show was in line with what was said during the trial a lot of things were left out and a lot of details were changed i chose to take the word of the people who i watched swear in under oath and give they testimony hours of that one thing i didn't like either about the investigation discovery granted i feel like the post on the social media considering her social status and some of the things that she did could technically be considered as bullying i feel like they unjustly vilified her and painted her as just this terrible, nasty human being. That's just my opinion. I don't agree with everything that she did. There were things that she did that were flat foot wrong and that I didn't agree with. None of it, I feel like, justified what happened to her, but... I don't know. That's just my own personal opinion. With these cases, most times, the picture that is painted clearly highlights one as a victim and the other as, you know, this monster and the person that's in the wrong. I honestly felt for both of them. I understand having a situation that is not comfortable between you and the person you live with could probably push you to be, you know, to say or do some things that you wouldn't normally do. I really feel like this situation is just extremely unfortunate for both families. Both families lost a young woman who they loved and they supported and had so much life ahead of them, so much potential. It's extremely unfortunate that they just could not resolve these issues 
and coexist peacefully and that it has to end like this. I cannot wait to see what y'all think about this. I feel like both ladies had valid grievances and it's just insane that this is the turn that it took. Shout out to all the OG subscribers as well as all the new ones. It's a lot of y'all. Like we hit, we hit 100K and it's just 4,000 4, of y'all just showed up out of nowhere. Welcome and hello. As always, and of course, I appreciate you guys spending time with me. And I look forward to seeing y'all again on Thursday. Don't forget to like my video before you leave, girl. Share it with a friend. Share it on your social media. Friends support friends, girl. Ain't we friends? Like, do that for me. Y'all, I hope y'all have a good week and a great weekend. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Live in, like, student apart. Okay. Come on now. Up to the student eye housing. Student eye housing, what? She then walks Shantina. Shantina, I didn't mix their names. Jesus Christ. She decides to take some. Oh, my nose itch. Hold on, girl. Shantarica's friends are even, not even noticing. Shantarica's friends are even noticing. Evie. Why do I keep saying Evie, girl? Ooh, not me getting eye. Just eyeliner everywhere. And uncomfortable for both of these lip. Both of these. Bleh. Could mean you get kicked off the. Bleh. Tina turns, oh my god, what did I do? That's too much. My ass really itches. And it's clean, so what's the tea? Her lights off are in her room. Her lights off are in her room. Her lights in her room are off. My brain is off today, actually. Standing in the hall, right near the hallway. What? I'm trying to feel like more Tisha Dam Adams. You know what I really look like? I love this wig. It's really cute or whatever, but I don't like bone hair. Bone hair, what? I don't like bone straight hair with the middle part because I feel like I look like Taboo from the Black Eyed Peas. And I posted a comparison on my Instagram and y'all was like, uh-uh, it's cute. You look good. Don't say that. You look good. And I'm like, I don't think I look bad, but look at this, child. But look at this. Tell me we don't give the same thing. Tell me we're not twins. Like, I don't feel like I'm unattractive. I just feel like taboo is what I give. Like, child, me, a middle part, bone hair. Why do I keep saying bone hair? Me, a middle part, bone straight hair, no makeup equates to taboo. Like, I peace. I still feel cute. I don't feel unattractive. I just feel like we look alike. And so I be trying to can, but I can't. Not Ezekiel and Tony, child, relax. And y'all know anytime pink is involved, mother feels cute, okay? So I'm really, girl, this might be the look I have when I get blue with daddy. I'm just saying. I feel like this is cute, girl. Not me forgetting to put on bottom mascara, girl. What's going on? Am I okay?